Scenes of calm in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe's second city, a day after the military took power to target what it called criminals around the president. There's no noise, no one is harassing anybody, everybody's busy doing his own duties and his business. No one is doing anything to anyone. People woke up, went to work, and uh, it's business as usual. We are a bit uh, uncertain about what's going to happen, but we are still very much fine. Uncertainty is the order of the day. Despite holding President Robert Mugabe and his wife under house arrest, the military's done little to prevent life from going on and has urged people to continue going to work. Mugabe set off a political crisis when he sacked his vice president, Emerson Mnangagwa, last week, seemingly clearing the way for his wife Grace to take his place. Despite consolidating her own power with Mugabe's powerful ZANU-PF youth wing, she's not popular with many Zimbabweans for her lavish spending, and the head of the youth wing itself walked back criticism he'd made of the military just a day before. I kindly request General Chuenga to please say accept my apologies on behalf of the youth league and myself. We are still young people, we are still growing up, we learn from our mistakes and from this big mistake we have learned a lot. Zimbabwe's opposition has called ZANU-PF an unsustainable system and powerful veteran groups have insisted Mugabe step down. However, it's not yet clear exactly what the military has in store for him. For now, though, it begs the question if the world's oldest head of state may finally see an end to his 37 years of rule.